We are recording. All right, thank you. Yes. Welcome to Fresno City Toastmasters. I am your president, Farron Jacobson. Welcome to our guests. We have three, no wait, Kua is a member. Is a mem She's official. Awesome. So we have two guests, Forrest and Michael, and welcome to our new member as well, Kua. Mm -hmm. um, we do our jazz hands. I forgot to mention that last meeting, I think. Uh, when we have Zoom meetings, since we're not meeting in person, we can't really applaud. So we use our jazz hands. Um, please keep yourself muted unless you're speaking and turn off your video if you're going to move about your space so that it's not a distraction to other members. Uh, let's see. Any business, club business that we have? I don't think there's anything new. Mm -mm board we're good there is a board meeting next monday i just sent out the invite for that if anyone who is not on the board would like to be a board member or just attend a meeting to see what it's like you're more than welcome i will send the link out if you request it so just shoot me an email i think that is about it i would like to bring up our toastmaster denise de benedetto hello everyone good afternoon specifically to our guests that are here for the first time today, Michael and Forrest, welcome. I am the Toastmaster for today. And of course, Kua, I wanna um, address you personally as well since it's only your second meeting and your first meeting as a, an official member. When we have a, when the Toastmaster does their presentation, our meetings always have a theme for the day. So typically the Toastmaster will take a couple of minutes and discuss that topic. Uh, they can take and use a personal story if they'd like. They can pull something historical from that day or something that goes along with the theme. Since today's theme is National Eat What You Want Day, I thought I would talk about the fact that I don't really have any food restrictions. I am a foodie. I like just about everything. So uh, National Eat What You Want Day is pretty much every day for me. <laughs> I have uh, acquired a new appreciation for the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup and ice cream lately. I don't know if it has something to do with my age. So nearly every night I have either a bowl of ice cream or some Reese's peanut butter cups that are in my freezer. I'm not promoting any sort of health or diet, but uh, it makes me happy. So that's what I do. I, uh, so I hope today you eat something that you maybe deprive yourself of, or you just eat something that's your favorite and enjoy nationally what you want day. I am now going to introduce our general evaluator, Storm Davis. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm your general eval evaluator today. I wanted to introduce our grammarian of the day, which is Heather Davis. Thank you, Storm. My timing is terrible. Sorry about that. Today, mm, oh, I really am sorry. So unprofessional today. Okay, excuse me. Okay, Denise actually said our word for the day, which is foodie. And it is, by definition, I just shared it in the chat, a foodie is a person with particular interests in food, a gourmet. So someone that more than just likes to eat food, but has just that interest in food in general that takes all those photos you see, those influencers do at the restaurants. Um, and it's becoming more, uh, just more popular as people are finding new hobbies. So the word of the day is foodie. If you can fit it into any type of conversation, I will be keeping track of that. Uh, and by the end of the meeting, I'll let you know who was able to fit that word in for today. And I'll pass it back to Storm. All right, thank you very much. I would now like to introduce our all counter of the day, Sarah Dawson. Thank you very much, Storm. All counter is probably it's one of my favorites. It's a lot of fun just to see how many, if, if any, you can pick out. And it's it's not to be critical or anything else. It's just an opportunity to be able to 
step up our game and be able to say things without the crutch words. And if there's a lot of crutch words happening. Sometimes it can detract from what you're trying to say. So that's the point of this is trying to make us all aware of what kind of crutch words we're using that may not allow us to speak as fluently and as eloquently as we know we can. So thanks. Thank you very much. Our timer for the day is Ms. Chanel West. Thank you, Storm. Hi, all. My name is Chanel, and I'm going to be your timer for today. One of our purposes in Toastmasters is to practice speaking within a specified time frame, and ideally not going longer than that time frame, but also not going shorter. So if you're like myself, sometimes it's hard to find enough to say. If you're like Joey Myers, sometimes you find way too much to say. And so our timer role helps us to stay within those bounds. I'm going to be using my phone today to time the speeches, the speech evaluation, and then also our table topics. So speeches are five to seven minutes, table topics are one to two minutes, and our speech evaluation length is two to three minutes. And as usual, the timer will turn green when the minimum time begins, it will turn yellow at the median time, and then red when your maximum time is reached. Thank you. Thank you, Chanel. Lastly, I would like to introduce Ty as the Zoom master of the day. Hello, my name is Ty and I will be the master of the Zoom today. I will be highlighting and spotlighting <clears throat> the speakers who are giving their speeches today and also responsible for recording, as Sharon pointed out. So I will do my best to make sure we stay on track. Thank you, Ty. I will give it to Denise, who is our Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you, Storm. For our guests, just a little, uh, I'm gonna back up a little bit in regards to the off counter and Sarah's role. Uh, I, If I missed it, Sarah, I apologize. There are certain crutch words that we tend to use a lot. Ah, uh, um, but, like, er, so. Those are the crutch words that Sarah is going to be counting, and she gives a report at the end of the uh, end of the meeting. You'll find out after just a couple of meetings that you will be very hyper aware of using those words after you've attended a couple of uh, Toastmasters meetings. It's just kind of the natural thing that happens. Anyway, we have a speaker today, just one. So I have the pleasure as the Toastmaster to introduce her. Taylor Friedrich has been a member, I believe, since around August of last year, Taylor, so August or September. She's going to be giving her second speech today. That speech is titled Healthy Soils and Four Easy Steps. Please welcome Taylor. Hi, Ty. Can you give me control? Because I do have a PowerPoint. All right. You guys will have to let me know if you can see this. Sorry. All right. Can everyone see it? Okay, I have a question for you all. How often do you think about soil? Five times a day, once a week, maybe never? Well, I think about it eight hours a day, five days a week, because my job title is literally soil conservationist. My goal of this presentation today is to get you to start thinking about soil health and give you a few tips to improve the soil on your farm or your garden or even the dirt patch on the side of your apartment building. Right now, thousands of farmers, ranchers, and garden enthusiasts are taking part in the Soil Your Undies Challenge, and this is to raise public interest in soil health. Now, I know this sounds weird and even a little gross, but it's actually a really fun way to measure your soil health. The first thing that you do is you take a pair of cotton underwear, Go bury it in your soil about four inches down. 
wait 60 days. And at the end of those 60 days, you dig it up and you see what you have left. If the underwear is torn up, chewed up, barely there, then that is a good sign. Because the more deteriorated your underwear is, the healthier your soil. So what in the soil is causing this deterioration? The answer is microbial activity. Healthy soils are literally alive. They're full of billions of soil microbes that break down organic matter, such as your cotton underwear. In fact, one tablespoon of healthy soil contains more microbes than there are people on this planet. And these microbes are so important because they provide services for us, such as nutrient cycling, breaking down organic matter, storing water, resisting erosion. They help us produce more food and they help us produce more nutrient dense food. Soil microbes are a farmer and gardener's best friend. But if we don't care for the soil and we don't, sorry, and we don't feed and protect these soil microbes, then they'll die or, they're, or they'll go dormant and your underwear will never decompose. The hungry microbes in your soil need food, shelter, water, and nutritional diversity, a lot like humans do. You can take care of your soil microbes by following these four easy steps. Step number one, keep it covered. The best thing you can do for your soil is to keep it covered with mulch or vegetation. This provides an armor for your soil and it keeps moisture in. If you can imagine going outside on a hot summer day in Fresno and you stick a thermometer in bare soil, it's gonna be up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If you stick that same thermometer in your covered soil, it'll hover at about 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Like humans, soil microbes prefer a more moderate temperature to thrive. Tip number two, minimize disturbance. Healthy soil texture is similar to that of a sponge. It has lots of holes and channels where earthworms and air and microbes can, can travel through. But when we constantly till our soil, we're killing those plant roots and we turn that texture into more of a flower-like substance. If you can imagine a spongy slice of bread and you pour water on it, the water is gonna soak in and infiltrate really nicely. But if you pour water onto a pile of flour, it's gonna, the water's gonna wick away, it's gonna be a mess, it's not gonna infiltrate. And that's because there's no pore space. That's why we need to take care of our soil structure. Number three, maximize biodiversity. How would you feel if you only ate oatmeal for the rest of your life? Probably not great. Like humans, soil microbes need nutritional variety in order to thrive. Plant roots exude nutrients and sugars and that feeds the soil microbes. So the more diverse plant species we provide, the more diverse nutrients and the more resilient our microbe population will be. Tip number four, take care of your roots. The soil food web relies on plant roots in order to keep it alive. They're feeding on the sugars and nutrients, so let's keep those roots there. Instead of tilling your soil, consider mowing it or weed whacking to help the roots remain below feeding the soil. These roots also act as an anchor for topsoil and help prevent wind and water erosion. So please just, just leave them be. I hope what you learned today will inspire you to go out into your farm or garden and reconsider how you manage that bare patch of soil. Remember, your soil can be teeming with life if you follow the four tips we covered today. Keep it covered, minimize disturbance, maximize biodiversity and take care of your roots. Thank you so much for listening today and don't forget to go home and bury your underwear. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> that was so interesting. I have to say that one of my favorite things to do, it's therapy for me, is planting 
uh, flowers and plants in my backyard. I have a very small yard. So it's just, there's something about putting my fingers in dirt um, that just makes me feel at peace always. So I found that very interesting. Thank you very much. Thanks. Do you want to give the control back to Ty? And Just I'll did it. Introduce. Are we back? We're good. Next, we have our table topics master, Joey Myers, and he will explain to you what table topics is. Joey? Thank you, Denise. And to go with our theme, National Eat What You Want Day, I have posted our different questions in the chat. Now, that is one way to do it in Table Topics. Table Topics is basically a, op an a opportunity to get asked a question and be able to take one to two minutes and formulate your thoughts and answer that question in one to two minutes. One of the biggest things that possibly your job or your business would do or offer an opportunity, either positive or negative, is if a newscaster came and put a mic in your face and asked you a question that you have to be able to formulate an answer that's somewhat coherent so you don't look awful on TV. So we can do it in a way where I'm doing it today, or we could do it in a way where you don't know what the question is before we ask it. So since we have our guest today, I decided to just kind of throw it up there. So if they want to take a turn, then they can. So you get one to two minutes. So I will start off and then I will give, I will volunteer, ask volunteers or volunteer people. But I think these questions are pretty straightforward. The four of them are a specific food. If a, a specific food didn't affect you in a negative way, what food would you eat 24 seven? What foods do you avoid and why? And what alternatives do you choose instead? What food or snack is your guilty pleasure and why? And the last one, if you were stranded on a desert island or dessert island, you see I, what I did there with the two S's there, strawberry shortcake, what two fruit trees would you plant or vegetation bushes or whatever you want, you want to do? So either one of those. So I was going to answer number two, what foods do you avoid and why and what alternatives do you choose instead? So one of the big things for me that I found, I do a lot of experimentation on myself, I'm kind of my own self-proclaimed lab rat. And I do, I measure myself in the morning. At the same time, we're in the same thing. And based on what my weight does, I look back on what I ate before. And so I've been doing this for years and I have a pretty good idea of, of how different liquids or foods or snacks will affect my body. And what I found that if I stay, and I'm a meat eater, meat, chicken, fish, all that stuff, so I find that if I stay close to the paleo style diet, for those of you familiar with paleo, paleo is you would pick meat, fish, or fowl, like chicken. You pick one of those in a meal. You pick a, a veggie. I tend to stay away from fruits and I, beans are typically okay. I guess brown rice and paleo is okay. So as long as I stick to avoiding high, highly refined carbs, even pastas, especially at night, I tend to lose two to three pounds from the night to the morning. So I'll weigh myself at night before bed. And then by the morning, I'm, I've lost two to three pounds. So it comes in real handy over the weekend when you have a Mother's Day weekend. By the way, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. When we are eating the tiramisu cake, the, the really rich buttery type of things, and you've gained a couple pounds. And then for me, paleo, if I get back on that on Monday, Typically by Tuesday, I've lost two to three pounds. I'm, I've shed that weight on what I do. So I always, I tend to try and avoid the carbs. If I have them, it's at lunch. I, I typically don't have them at breakfast, but at night, if I'm going to have them for dinner, they need to be before around four or five o'clock. Later, I tend to, in, instead of losing two to three pounds, I tend to put a pound or two on with the carbs. So then I got to go through a whole paleo flush the next day. So that is my answer to question number two. Anybody else want to volunteer to answer one of those questions? Heather Davis, go for it. Okay. So I'm going to answer the question, which is what food snack is your guilty pleasure and why? And my guilty pleasure 
is this food that my best friend showed me how to make. It's because she's vegan. I'm not, but I'm willing to try different food. And she makes these um, faux chicken wings, but she uses cauliflower. And I love it. They're so good. Um, I've been actually meaning to try it with like an air fryer. And it's really simple. It's everything you would do with the, you know, chicken wings, just substitute it with um, cauliflower. But the reason why it's my guilty pleasure is because um, it makes me really, really gassy for the rest of the night. And I feel so bad for my husband. He's like, you cannot eat these for months. So like I had to go on like a three month hiatus because I wasn't allowed to eat them anymore. So that's my guilty pleasure. Good one. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Yeah. yeah. And then they're doing the cauliflower crust for the pizzas. That's man, that was awesome. Yes. All right. Anybody else? Let me get back to my gallery view so I can see everybody. Anybody else? Storm? Go for it, buddy. Right, right. So as a non, sorry about that. As a non-foodie, I have the tendency to love sweets. I don't like all sweets as long as it's a little bit, as long as it's not too sweet. Nothing like frosting. Frosting on, on a cake is just way too much for me. I don't like it. But Oreos, those are so good. They're vegan friendly. And my mom will eat them. My daughter will eat them. And if I see them, they just call to me. And I feel so guilty of like, I'm really hungry. I don't want to spend uh, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes cooking or even opening up cans or something like that or preparing anything. It's like there's a little package. And they get their eight Oreos. And that's my guilty pleasure of like being really lazy and eating something that is just what, I feel is sugar. Love that storm. Foodie and sugar, foodie and sugar. I don't know if that's an oxymoron or I guess it works for anything, right? Foodie being a foodie. <laughs> Something. <laughs> Something like that. Thank you, Storm. Anybody else? I'll go, Joe. Go for it, Ty. I am not a person who really likes sweets. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do love a cookie or a cake or something like that. Um, but it's not something that I ever like search out or seek out, you know, so many times my family gets mad at me because like I won't have cake on my birthday just because I don't want it. <clears throat> but I do every once in a while, you know, get the get an urge for and something like ice cream. I think that's maybe my one my one vice. I'd rather have ice cream more than a cookies or cake or candy bars or anything like that. I'm more of a salty person than I think a sweet person. So I do avoid sweets when possible, but I do love ice cream. That's my one vice. I don't have it that often. And when I do have it, I usually get it from um, uh, Whole Foods or something. I can't remember the name of the brand I get. It's drawing a blank. I have some right now, but it's really low in sugar, low in carbs. And uh, I don't feel guilty when I eat it. Awesome. Thanks, Ty. What, fl what flavor is it? It's uh, peanut butter chocolate. Oh, there it's, you go. It, it, I think I believe it's called Enlightened, if I remember correctly. Got it. That yeah. goes right along with Denise's peanut butter cups. <laughs> All right. Anybody I'll else? Go, I'll go, Joey. And I'll do it. I have been doing some thinking about the last question. If you were stuck on an island in the middle of nowhere, what two plants could you cultivate that would provide enough sustenance? I, I would be curious to know what everybody else thinks, but with my limited knowledge of farming and gardening, I'm thinking that a, just purely from like a sustenance perspective that a, probably a nut would be hmm. helpful, um, some sort of nut or because it, it's a full protein or a legume that has a, a full protein in it. And then secondly, a some sort of dark vegetable that's very vitamin high. I think broccoli is one of those that if you look at all of the, the vitamin charts, it, it shows up most prevalently on all of them. So I think if you had those two things, if you had a nut or a legume and then a green leafy vegetable that you could probably manage to survive for quite a while. Good, good way to look at it there, Chanel. Well, if it were Captain Jack Sparrow from, from the movie, it would be Sugar King because of the rum, I think. Yeah, yeah. That would be his true. sustenance. 
Grapes. <laughs> Good point. All right, anybody else? Hold on, Storm. We'll see if we get. Do you mind if I jump in here, Joey? Go ahead, Forrest. Sure, I thought I'd just jump in because uh, Chanel brought up some good points and I was kind of thinking about, you know, what what two trees I would want to bring with me on a, on the, the desert island or dessert island. And um, so Chanel brought up some good points, you know, the sustenance perspective. And so I have experience with the Polynesian uh, trees that they would bring with them. And so what they brought was breadfruit and coconut. And so those were the two primary sources of, of nutrients when they spread out amongst the, uh, amongst the Pacific region. And uh, they're called the canoe plants because of that. So that's what I would bring for sustenance. Love that. And that's been proven obviously for what, hundreds or thousands, probably tens of thousands. Absolutely. Of <laughs> yes, yes. Love it. <laughs> Love it. I like that. Ty? Oh, I already went. I was just. Did you have a comment? No, I didn't. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was just giving spirit. Oh, you're giving the hands. Yeah. The, the jazz hands. Got it. I thought you were waving at me, Ty. <laughs> Aaron, somebody who hasn't gone yet. I can go. Go for it. Those of you who have been members for a while, you know that I am vegan and I am definitely a vegan foodie. I It was easy for me to give up meat for the animal's sake and I went vegetarian five years ago, but the hard thing for me was giving up dairy products. I love cheese and ice cream, but I found that after I gave up dairy products, my migraines went away. I haven't had a migraine in four years and it makes a huge difference in my life. And recently I told you guys that I, I started planning a road trip from here to the Canadian border and back. And I've mapped my route and all of the different trails that I'm gonna be running. And then last night, I decided to also map out all the places that I'm going to eat. Cause being a vegan foodie, I need to know that I have a huge variety of vegan restaurants that I can try in all these different cities that I visit. And I'm really, really excited about this one. I think it's in Eugene, Oregon. It's called Vitopia and it's actually a vegan cheese factory and deli restaurant. So to have a bunch of different vegan cheeses to choose from when that's the thing that I think I miss the most, uh, makes me really excited. So I will let you know how it is. Thank you. Are you gonna be blogging all this, Farron? I actually just got my GoPro yesterday and it's charging right now. So yes, I'm going to be vlogging the whole trip. You got to tell, are you going to have do all your videos and at the end of it, you're going to upload them or are you going to upload them as you're doing it? We'll see. We'll see how it goes because I am sleeping in my car. I'm not going to be in a hotel at all. Mm -hmm. I'm sleeping in the Tesla. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how much reception I'm going to have. I'm going to be at different campgrounds. So who knows? I will try, but it might have to be after. <laughs> all right. Cool. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd be fun to follow you as you're doing it. All right, anybody else has said, we think we got most everybody. Cool, you wanna try it? Um, okay, um, I was thinking about what two plants I would bring and I chose a peach tree because when I was little, uh, my dad grew a peach tree and I remember every time I eat one, I was always just like planted for fun and they would grow really fast. And then my dad would always have to put them out. He would have to stop work because he said we had enough peach tree in the backyard. So I think that that would be one of my plan because it was easy to grow and uh, I would have endless amount of peaches. And then the other thing would be coconut because um, well the coconut had a lot of benefit. Like um, I, I forgot who said it, but like uh, coconut water, you know, to keep you hydrated, and then you could use the meat to uh to eat. The meat you could eat it and you could create like a lotion for moisturize to keep your skin soft. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons I would choose a coconut and peach. I love that. Another sustenance one. I like that. I thought people were going to be bringing the, the Captain Jack Sparrow style. Way to go. All right. What do we have left? I know Taylor gave a speech. She doesn't have to go. Denise, uh, Denise did you, you went or you didn't go? Well, I kind of shared my um, 
prefer desserts, but I'll I'll talk about what was the one that was uh, the last one, the deserted island? You were stranded on a deserted. I was or desert. stranded on a deserted island. Mm -hmm. I would have to have an avocado tree. I could eat avocados all day long, every day. It's one of my favorite foods. I definitely would have to have that. And I'm a summertime fruit girl. So it would be either a nectarine tree or a plum tree. And whether the sustenance is there or not to survive, that's what I would prefer to have. <laughs> Denise, have you ever had a grilled avocado? I don't think I have. Um, I had one this week while I was in LA because I was there for the week at a restaurant. Mm. It was grilled avocado with this peanut matcha sauce on it. It was amazing. Mm. Mm. That sounds good. If you look on YouTube, there's a bunch of ways. Yeah. There's a bunch of recipes to do it. Thank you. I'll look that up. Thanks, Denise. And thanks, Ty. I'm into smoking stuff right now. So it'd be, that would be an interesting taste. Smoked avocado. It was amazing. Huh. We didn't hear from Sarah. Sarah and Taylor. Taylor doesn't have to because she did a speech, but <laughs> awesome, awesome cookies. I guess I'll just go with the easy one of what I don't eat because I don't <laughs> eat vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have never liked them. They taste like dirt. I don't know why people want to eat dirt, but that's okay. <laughs> they probably think it's crazy to, that I eat meat and I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I, I think the... I don't, I've just never really, really enjoyed eating vegetables and it kind of makes me gag when I try it. And, and, but I have recently, occasionally tried to implement where you grind it up and, and make a saute out, is it sauteed mm -hmm. or whatever that is where you blend it up and then you can just put it into different, um, different recipes. And so that's been a little bit more interesting. It, it takes a lot of getting used to because I, I love my chocolate and I love my fat and all of those kind of things. But anyway, that's what I stay away from. And I don't think I have an alternative yet. Occasionally I'll do a, oh, a smoothie, but I couldn't do those every day either. So then I give up. Maybe <laughs> I can be encouraged to try something new. We'll see. <laughs> Thanks, Joey. <laughs> You got it, Sarah. Well, maybe I have somebody in mind. Maybe Farron can uh, do something because she's she's gone through all the little rabbit holes to make it, dress it up, make it taste good. Yeah, Sarah, I'm going to make you a chocolate cake with hidden veggies inside of it. Uh -oh. yes. I would totally try that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess don't invite you to meet me for a beet salad, right, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah will bring her own lunch. Do you know this one time I went to this this lady's house that we were staying over at their house and they had salad for dinner. Mm. I was like, okay, so I took a bite and I kind of moved the food around and just took another bite and I'm trying <laughs> to do my best because this is what's for dinner. And then all of a sudden, one of the ladies that happened to be there was super observant and super loud mouth. And she's like, oh, you're not eating that. How come? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and, and I said, "Well, I don't really eat that." They're like, "Oh, well, we have spaghetti. It's, it's just we haven't put it out yet." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to hook up with Farron. Farron's Farron's got it all taken care of. Man, Brussels sprouts are my favorite food. Yeah. Very cool. All right, anybody else, or should we move on? We're good to go. All right. I will pass the baton back over to Storm, our general evaluator, to introduce our evaluator. Hey, guys. So we had one speech today. Farron will be evaluating the speech today for Taylor. Thank you, Storm. I need to make sure I can see Chanel with the timer. Just a second. There we go. Taylor, you did a really great job. I'm surprised that this is your second speech. I feel like you have done more speeches than that, but maybe I, I don't know. I really love that you started with a question that really made me think, how much do I actually think about soil? I, I guess I never really thought about soil. And you made it very relatable because you said you should think about the soil that could be in your farm, your garden, or even the patch on the side of your apartment. So it makes it relatable to everybody because we all have different living situations. 
I love that you did a great job of explaining. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I have dogs here. I apologize for the sounds that they're making. <laughs> Uh, you did a really good job of explaining something that's very scientific in a way that everybody could understand. And it was very engaging. I loved your slides. They were not a whole lot of text, which is a very good thing because you don't want someone reading your slides while you're trying to explain something. So I think that the amount of text on them was perfect. The very vibrant photos and illustrations were awesome as well. Your hand gestures is one thing that I will be a little bit picky about. I think I'm doing it now too. You can kind of see your hands, but maybe if you had scooted back a little bit, you could see more of your hand gestures. I wasn't able to see all of them. And I think just scooting back from your screen a little bit would help with that. So keep that in mind next time, maybe do a little run through and see how much space you need to give yourself. I love that you had really great organization. As Joey likes to explain it, you told us what you were gonna tell us, and then you told us, and then you told us what you just told us, something like that. And I also love that you had a great ending of go home and bury your underwear. It made us think back to the beginning where you said the best way to test your soil is to bury your underwear. Super interesting and something that I'm not going to forget. One other, little nitpicky thing is I did see you glancing at your notes and I feel like this is what you do, like you said, eight hours a day. So you know this stuff. And I think you could, you could have explained what you were trying to say without glancing back at your notes and the structure of your speech. I think you could have improv it a little bit more and that may have been more effective than glancing at your notes and then apologizing for taking a pause or glancing at, at your notes. So I think maybe just, you seem like you're comfortable with the material. So maybe just relying on your own knowledge more than what you have written down on a paper could have been uh, really good. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So just work on your hand gestures, moving back from the screen a little bit, use less notes. Uh, don't apologize for losing your spot that detracts us. But overall, you did a really fantastic job and had really great slides. So good job. Can't wait to see more. Thanks, Marion. Thank you very much, Karen, for that. OK, I would like to start introducing our team. I would like to start with Den um, Sarah Dawson as the AH counter to give the report. It's happening already. Thank you. Thank you so much, Storm. I was just looking it over to see what the common things were amongst this one. This time we did way better on the so's. There weren't as many so's as I remember from, from last time. The us and the ums though seem to, to peak a little bit. And usually it's with the extemporaneous speaking, not so much the ones where you already have it planned. Storm, I just wanna say, I've caught very, very few on yours. And I know that's been a huge thing from the beginning that you have worked on. So it's just really, really awesome on that. Taylor, I only caught one uh for you in your, that entire speech. That was great. So ah, there it is. <laughs> we'll catch it. But anyway, I think overall, it, really great. As and ums today I think, uh, were the ones that happened a little bit more often. If you want specifics, let me know. Thank you so much, Sarah. Okay, I would like to introduce our timer for the day, Ms. Chanel Wetz. Thank you, Storm. We all did pretty well today on our times. Taylor, your speech was right at five minutes and 30 seconds, so perfect timing, and it was also a good speech. I really enjoyed it. For table topics, Joey managed to stop himself at a minute 55. Heather, you were at 55 seconds, so close in there. Storm, you were at 45 seconds. Ty, you were right at 59 seconds, so just shy of a minute. Forrest, your time was 50 seconds. Thanks for uh, jumping in on your first meeting and joining us. Farron, you were at 109. Kua, you were at 35 seconds for your table topic. Denise, you were 25 seconds, but as you said, you had spoken some at the beginning in your Toastmasters role. Sarah, yours was a minute and six seconds, so right in the one to two minute window. I did not time myself. I'm pretty sure I was under a minute though. 
And Farron, your evaluation was just over three minutes. It was about three minutes and seven seconds or so. So again, very close in there. That is my timer report. Thank you all. Thank you, Chanel. I would also like to introduce our grammarian of the day to give our report, Heather Davis. Thank you, Storm. So I think I caught everyone. Um, let me know if I didn't. But I heard two uh, from Joey and Farron Foodie twice. And then I also heard it from Denise and Storm. Did I miss anybody that managed to fit it in? Nope. OK, well, we always have next week. And that's still pretty good. And I'll pass it back to Storm. Thank you, Heather. OK, I would like to give the baton back to our general evaluator and our president, Ms. Farron. Storm, give your general eval of the meeting and oh. then pass it to Farron. OK, I believe that the meeting started a minute late. It's not bad at all. Everything went smooth. We will stuck. We will probably end on time. If we will end on, we'll end on time. It's a little bit early and I'm stuck. And then go ahead and pass it back. And I will give the baton to Ms. Ferry and Karen Jacobson. You got it, Storm. Am I back? Okay, I got a weird error message. Thank you, Storm. Um, great evaluation. I agree, great speech today. The meeting ran really smoothly. I'm glad that everyone got to participate in table topics. Almost everyone, I think one of our guests didn't, but that's totally fine. I, I'm really glad that one of our guests chose to participate in table topics. I know when I first started joining, I did not participate. I didn't speak a word for at least two or three meetings. So mm -hmm. really excited for that. A virtual sticker goes to Taylor for her speech and another one to Sarah for jumping in last minute for a role. Did I miss anyone? I think we're good. I would like to go over next week's agenda and fill that in. On May 18th, our theme is chores. Would anyone like to be the Toastmaster? Carol, thank you. Sarah, thank you. I'm scheduled to speak as well as Storm. Would anyone else like to give a speech? Okay, what about speeches for May 25th or June 1st? Would anyone like to plan ahead? I'll do May 25th. Farron, right. Farron is one of those, uh, the Memorial Day weekend or Labor Day or whatever day that is. 25th, I think. The 25th, do we want to not meet that day? That's gonna be Tuesday. I should be good to meet. I'll be fine. Can meet. In favor of meeting? Okay, we'll hold a meeting. So May 25th, we have Ty. Would anyone else like to speak that day? What about you, June 1st? You could put me down. Oh, go ahead, Heather. Yeah, anybody else? I, for June 1st. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll put you both down for June 1st, Heather and Joey. Thank you. Thank you. And evaluators for my speech and for Storm's speech next week. I, I can evaluate one of you. Okay, thanks Chanel. Anyone else? Denise. Thank you, Denise. Table topics master. <clears throat> Heather? Heather? General evaluator. You say Heather? Yeah. Heather? So the I'm sorry, just to clarify, the table topics is for next week's meeting, correct? Yeah. Okay. And what's the next one, Karen? General evaluator. <clears throat> or a counter, timer, grammarian. You can put me down for general eval if nobody jumped okay, in. Sure. And then Kua, we can get you in. We maybe just start with timer. Um, I'm not sure right now. I'm just using my iPhone. Mm -hmm. because, so can I still do it? Yep. So there's an app. Okay. Called, and correct me if I'm wrong, because some of you out there with iPhones, if it's not on there, what's it called? I'll find it and I'll put it in the chat. Kua, do you mean that you're using your iPhone to actually look at the meeting? Yes, right now, yes. 
Okay, um, if you have a watch or some other way to time. Okay. That'll work. Okay. Okay. Cool. Or we can do like one for when you're at the beginning of the time where it would be a green and then we could say two for yellow and then three for red. You can just do it that way. Yeah. Okay. That'll be fun. We'll go timer. Cool. Is, it, is it for next week? Yeah. Next week. Okay. Do you want to get out for a speech on uh, the 25th or June 1st or? Oh, sorry, for what? Do you want to get on for your icebreaker speech, your first speech? Uh, I'll do June 1st. June 1st, okay. Yes. Uh, put her in there, Farron, and put me in the third position. Okay. Can always knock me off if uh, I'd rather her get the speech than me. Got it. Thank you. And we just need a grammarian and an awe counter for next week. I can tentatively volunteer for grammarian or grammarian. Okay, I'll put you down, Taylor, for grammarian and an awe counter. I'd be happy to do some sort of role. I'll be back next week. I just don't give me something that has a huge amount of responsibility. <laughs> don't worry about it, Forrest. Oh. You're you're a guest still, so you don't have to, to jump in. Okay. Anything. Yeah, yeah, you're, okay. good. you're good. Unless you want to that. join as a member, and then you yeah. can. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that for sure. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to do that right away. <laughs> okay, okay, sounds good. Baron's giving you the three, two, one. Three, join in three, two, one. <laughs> uh, Ty, do you want to be all counter next week? or do you want Sure. To okay, cool. Thank you. Cool, we're all filled out for next week. I'll send out the agenda. And then now's the time for any questions, comments, concerns from anybody, including guests. Um, I just need to actually pay my fees. So okay. I will connect with you, Joey, on that. So I'm gonna put the, so a couple things. So Fresno TM at Gmail, that's our PayPal. I put that in the chat. So you can send that there if you don't, have a PayPal or something, PayPal, you can do a credit card or whatnot. If you don't want to do it, that, I can do it over the phone if you want. I, I can do, I can do a credit card. That's fine. Uh, through PayPal? Uh, I don't have PayPal, so. Okay. So you want to maybe just, yeah, text me and then we can do it, do it over the phone. Okay. Sound like a plan. Did you get my good. payment, Joey? Heather? Did you get my payment? I did think it go I through? did. Okay. Just to make sure I went through. Yeah, let me make a note real quick so I can check it. So, there. and Forrest, I will put you on our distribution list so that you will get the agendas every week. And that sounds great. Thank you, Denise. Mm -hmm. And then one last thing, let me put in the. So for those that are in Pathways right now, there's a link to our doc. Try and see if you can update that with your speeches. So I know Taylor had a new one today. So all the the steps are in there. So just follow the steps. Let me know if something's goofy in those steps, like there's something missing. Let me know and I can change that and, and update it. But see if you can go in there and update where you're at in your speeches on Pathways. This is a good opportunity to let our guests and a new member know about Pathways and what we're talking about. In Toastmasters, it's basically our curriculum, but there are 11 different ones to choose from. And it leads you through a series of speeches, a total of five levels. It could be anywhere from, I think, 15 to 18 speeches or so to get through an entire curriculum called a pathway. Right now I'm in the engaging humor pathway. It's my second, second pathway that I'm doing. And I just finished level two. I think I've given six or seven speeches in this pathway, but each speech gives you something to focus on. So maybe it's vocal variety, or maybe it's your sense of humor, uh, visual aids, visual presentation. There's different things to work on and it helps you become a better public speaker over the course of taking this entire pathway. So that's what you get as part of your membership benefits. Um, uh, I do wanna say that the, the sheet that you just shared with us is in view only, so I can't actually go in and edit. It, you'd have what's your, to what's your email heather um which, what is my email it's heather guajaro at mm -hmm. gmail.com okay send me so i have you in here at that one and it says editor so oh me. i'm sorry i'm probably i opened it with my work my work ah, email that's so what threw me off what's, okay what's your work email put that in the chat and i'll if you don't mind i'm just going to keep the two separate okay. um yeah <laughs> it, it just gets messy so i'll just I'll just load it with my other email. Cool. Thank you, though. Got it. Great. Any other questions, comments, concerns? 
Good to go. All right. We're going to end the meeting early, 1256, and we'll see you guys next week on Tuesday. Have a great Come week. If you want to come Bye, to guys. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, everybody.